I wanted to make a quick video to briefly discuss symmetric groups. So we have a set X. So this is a set. And we're going to have another set, S sub X. And we're going to say that this is the set of all bijections. So bijections. So all maps that are one to one and onto from X to X. And this is actually a group, right? This is called the symmetric group on X. So the elements of this group are actually bijections. So it's kind of a little, little bit abstract. So the group operation in this group, so the group operation, uh, we're going to use a little O. And this is function composition. So function composition. And this is actually a binary operation on this set. In other words, if you take uh, a map F and a map G in this set, then the composition of those maps is also a bijection, and so therefore it's also in the set. So if you have two bijections and you compose them, you also get a bijection. So why is this a group? Well, let's briefly talk about it. So first of all, we'll just state it without proof. Uh, function composition is associative. So is associative. That's a pretty easy proof. So that is associative. Uh, two, we need an identity, identity element if this is going to be a group. So I'm going to use ID. So this will be the identity element. And it's a map, right? Because the elements of this set are actually maps. And it's given by, well, this is the identity function. So ID of x is equal to x for all x in capital X. So this is the map that fixes x for all x in big X. So it's called the identity element. So this is our identity element. And what about inverses? Well, if you take a map that's a bijection, then the inverse of that map is also a bijection, so it's also in this set. So we do have a group, you know, all three conditions are satisfied. It does take uh, a bit of work to actually prove uh, that it's a group. So what we usually do with symmetric groups is we restrict X. We look at a specific case of capital X. So say that X is finite. So we'll assume it's finite. And since it's finite, we can list its elements by using numbers or symbols. So you could use A, B, C, D, E, F, G, et cetera. Let's go ahead and use numbers. So one, two, three, dot, 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 N. And in this case, instead of, instead of writing that, we write S sub N. So this is typically what you see in most algebra books. And in this case, we give it a new name. We say it's the symmetric group of degree N. Okay, of degree N. It turns out that there's N factorial bijections from this set into itself. So the order, in other words, the number of elements in this group is actually equal to uh, N factorial. It's also called the symmetric group on n symbols, but I'll stick to symmetric group of degree n. So for example, the symmetric group of degree three would have six elements. The symmetric group of degree four would have uh, 24 elements, etc. Let's go ahead and look at an example of a way to uh, write the elements of this group, because thinking of them as functions like this, you know, from x to x, does get uh, a bit cumbersome. So there's some notation that was created that we can use to help simplify things. It's called uh, array notation. And some people also call it a uh, two line notation. So two line notation. And so if we take an element, say F in the symmetric group of degree N, we can represent this element uh, by an array. So in the top row, We'll have one, two, dot, 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 n. And these are all elements of x. And then here, well, where does one go? Well, it goes to f of one. Two goes to f of two, dot, 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 and n goes to f of n. So this here is called array notation. 
So how do you compose um, two elements using array notation? Let's go ahead and do a, a quick example of that. So let's take, let's see, let's try this one. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And then let's see, three, six, one, four, two, five. And we're going to compose this element with one, two, three, four, five, six, with five, four, three, two, one, six. So these are both um, elements in S sub six, right? In the symmetric group of degree six, and we're composing them. So let's carefully do that. So this will be equal to, well, we can go ahead and write the top row. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, function composition takes place right to left. So let's start with one. So one, where does that go? Well, if you look here, one goes to five. And then over here, five goes to two. So one goes to two. Again, one goes to five. And five goes to two. So one goes to two. Done. Let's go to two now. So two. Two goes to four. And four goes to four. Therefore, two goes to four. Again, two goes to four. And four goes to four. So two goes to four. Let's do three. Three goes to three. And three goes to one. So three goes to one. Four goes to two. And two goes to six. So four goes to six. Five goes to one. And one goes to three. So five goes to three. And then six goes to six. And then here, six goes to five, so six goes to five. And I think that's good. I'll stop the video here. Maybe make some more where we actually uh, do computations. I hope that was of some help.